For the first time in more than 80 years, it's possible that a tropical storm or a hurricane will make landfall on the actual California coastline this weekend or Monday as Hurricane Hillary moves through the area. Please refer to official weather forecasts for the latest on the storm and preparedness actions. But in this video, I want to discuss the topic of hurricanes in Southern California more generally, looking at the history and assessing the known risks. When we think of disasters in Southern California, earthquakes usually come to mind. More recently, wildfires have almost replaced earthquakes as the state's top disaster, and winter storms can bring beneficial rain and flooding from time to time. We also think of landslides that sometimes occur during winter storms or soon thereafter. But California is the only southern coastal region of the United States that we don't usually associate with hurricanes. Are we underestimating a real risk or is California somehow immune? Far Southern California is at the same latitude as the Carolinas. So from that standpoint, the region should get plenty of hurricanes. The reason why the reality is a bit different is ocean temperatures tend to be a lot lower in Southern California than at similar points on the East Coast. This map represents a moment in time in August, 2023 but it gives a good visual of the typical situation in summer and early fall when hurricanes are at their most active. You can see the ocean temperatures in the 80s in the Gulf of Mexico and East Coast, but only in the 60s and low 70s on the West Coast. There are a lot of factors in hurricane formation and growth. So warm ocean waters don't necessarily mean that there will be a hurricane. The Persian Gulf and the South Atlantic Basin are two parts of the world where ocean temperatures are very warm but hurricanes don't seem to occur with any regularity. But hurricanes rarely, if ever, occur when ocean temperatures are below 80 degrees. And most of the time, ocean temperatures in Southern California don't reach that level. There are anecdotal claims that hurricanes used to be more frequent in Southern California in the distant past. Back during Spanish rule, such storms were known as chubascos, which comes from the Portuguese word for rain and reference tropical squalls that could be hurricanes. These storms regularly occur in Baja, California, and just a shift of a few hundred miles would put these in California's way much more frequently. While it's certainly possible that tropical storms visited California before the historical record, we need to be cautious because there could be confusion with winter storms in some instances. California has a very hot climate, and it isn't unusual for heat waves with temperatures in the 90s in winter, which could be followed by a powerful wet winter storm. So a story of a hot spell broken by a sudden powerful storm might sound like a summer hurricane, but could actually be a more typical winter storm in November, for instance. We can't rule out the possibility that ocean temperatures were once warmer off the Southern California coast. And that would have had to be the case if hurricanes really w were more frequent at that time. Overall, the world is much warmer today than a few hundred years ago. Back then, it was the midst of the Little Ice Age, a generally globally cool period from 1500 to 1800. But there could have been regional exceptions. We don't have the type of historical records we keep today, so it probably would be uh, wise not to rule it out. There does seem to be evidence of one hurricane paying a visit to the San Diego area in 1858 on the eve of the Civil War and right before settlement of Southern California really began in earnest. The path of that storm is shown in the map here. The most significant historical tropical storm to impact Southern California was the 1939 Long Beach Tropical Storm. In 1939, in September, the same month that World War II broke out in Europe, Southern California was impacted by four tropical systems, and one of them actually made landfall in the Long Beach area and produced widespread heavy rain throughout the region. There was coastal flooding and some flash flooding further inland. Interestingly, it was preceded by one of the worst heat waves in the region's history prior to the last 50 years. And many of the records from that heat wave stood for decades, including warm overnight temperatures in the 80s, even in coastal Los Angeles. I'd also mention when we reference the death tolls of hurricanes of the past, it's important to keep in mind that most of the people back then died at sea because ships would be caught in the storms unawares. Today, that's a lot less likely to occur due to advance warning. Now the death and destruction is almost all on land, so a hurricane with a similar death toll today would probably be much more devastating to communities on shore. Here's a look at the tropical storms that impacted Southern California during most people's lifetimes today. This only includes the storms from the late 20th century, 
so it doesn't have Tropical Storm K, which approached the San Diego coast last September, or Hurricane Dolores, which brought heavy rain in 2015 and made that year the only one in the region's history with more rain in summer than winter. But as you can see with this map, there have been many storms that have approached Southern California. They have just all weakened below tropical storm force or have curved inland before reaching California and instead hit Mexico. Since the northeast quadrant of a hurricane has the most severe conditions, many of these storms have actually had a greater impact on the Colorado River Valley, including communities such as Yuma, El Centro, Blythe, Lake Havasu City, and Needles. There's a common claim among baby boomers and Gen Xers raised in California that hurricanes hit the state in the 1970s. But as this map reveals, there were some close calls in that decade, but they all either weakened below tropical storm force or made landfall in nearby Mexico. Many did bring significant rainfall to California though. As we've seen time and time again in the last two decades, the most dramatic destruction from hurricanes in places like New Orleans, Florida, or Texas is the storm surge, which is when the ocean floods nearby coastal areas. In recent years, the storm surge computer models have been expanded to include the Southern California coastline. So what I'm gonna show here are the worst case scenarios for Southern California. And this is based on the idea of a category two hurricane because forecasters do not anticipate that there would ever be a category three or stronger storm making landfall in Southern California. If that happened, obviously the storm surge potential would be much worse. All of these scenarios probably would not occur in a single hurricane because it would depend on where the storm actually made landfall. But this tool helps residents and local governments understand if their localities are at risk. So right here, you have a map of the San Diego area. And what we see here is that the South Bay near the Mexican border is at highest risk from storm surge flooding, but a few other coastal areas as well are impacted, including Coronado and the Mission Bay area. Well, it might be true that San Diego County would be more likely to actually experience a hurricane because ocean temperatures tend to be a bit warmer there. The situation is actually more severe in Orange County if a hurricane were to impact that area. And that's because there are parts of Orange County that are low lying that go inland for uh, many miles that way. So the water could move much farther inland and impact more neighborhoods and communities. Here we see that large parts of Newport Beach, Huntington Beach, Seal Beach, and Long Beach would be subject to flooding in a worst case scenario storm. In the LA area, Marina del Rey, Venice Beach, and parts of El Segundo are at risk, but a lot of the coastline isn't at risk because it's very hilly, which would prevent the water from moving far inland. Oxnard in Ventura County has a lot of areas that could flood as shown in the map at right. But we can be thankful that the ocean temperatures tend to be quite a bit lower up there compared to San Diego. So the chance of a hurricane making a direct hit in Ventura or Santa Barbara counties seems lower, though I suppose not out of the question. Storm surge isn't the only risk from hurricanes, of course. Freshwater flooding is a concern which references floods from heavy rains. In parts of the East and Gulf Coasts, there's a real risk when a hurricane arrives after a particularly wet period because the ground is very saturated. Here in Southern California, this risk is countered by the fact that summers are almost always dry. So a rainstorm in the midst of summer or early fall might actually be more beneficial than not in California. Fire season could be stopped before it started if a tropical system brought widespread summer rain to the area. On the other hand, a storm that failed to make landfall but was near enough to bring high winds might actually create a fire danger situation, such as what occurred in Hawaii recently. That would look a lot like the Santa Ana winds Southern Californians are used to in fall and winter, but might be hotter and drier since it would be in summer. Hurricanes are also known to spawn tornadoes, though uh, hurricane-driven tornadoes tend to be weaker than what we see in springtime in the Great Plains or Deep South. 